everybody. Today we're going to be talking about impact wrenches and specifically torque and torque loss. Now you might think depending on whatever impact you're using it has a certain power rating and that's what you're always going to get out of it. But if you do use let's say extensions or adapters you're going to have much less power than if you just use a standard socket. Now my first experience with this was when I was in my early 20s and I tried to remove a Honda crank bolt at one of my buddy's shops and we were using a very large extension on the socket. So after a long time of being unable to remove the bolt, his dad who happened to own the shop came out, looked at what we were doing and said, I think I can remove that bolt. And we said, there's no way. We've been hammering on this for like 30 minutes. It's not going to come off. We handed him the impact and said, go ahead and try it. You know, we didn't think he really had a chance because we tried for so long. All he did was take the socket off the extension, put it directly on the impact, and he could remove the bolt with just a few seconds. So we really felt stupid at the time, but that was my first lesson firsthand as far as torque loss. Now this is going to apply whether you have pneumatic impacts, corded impacts, or even cordless impacts. The same theory applies to all of them. So next let's go through the actual testing and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. To understand torque loss and how to prevent it, the first thing you need to do is understand how an impact wrench works. Now unlike a standard drill that's going to have constant power in whatever rotation you're going and there's no impacts, an impact wrench has a mechanism inside that's going to turn this drive end in one direction or the other, but it's also going to cause very small impacts to give you a lot of power. Now what that's going to do, if you take a look at the socket, in slow motion as it rotates, it's going to make many small impacts all the way around. And when it's plugged directly onto the impact wrench, then you're going to experience maximum power. Now that's because there's only one point of contact in between the impact wrench and the socket and that's the drive end. Now the way you experience torque loss is when you couple other things in between. So if we have a small extension right here we can plug that in and then we have a universal joint we can also plug that in. Finally we're going to plug that into our socket. Now what you need to understand at this point in between the drive end and the socket we've added additional points of contact. Now the way this actually operates, as this makes an impact, it's going to slam into the bottom of the extension. The extension at that point is going to turn and slam into the bottom of the universal joint. That's going to turn and slam into the bottom of the socket. Now with a universal joint, it's actually a little bit more because there's multiple points of contact in between. The top portion of the universal joint is connected to the bottom with a pin. So really, we went from one point of contact when we just used the socket to one, two, three, and four points of contact. To do the testing, I'll be using an Ingersoll Rand W7150 along with a Skidmore Wilhelm Model R. Now the nut and bolt combination that I have installed in here is the largest one available. It's the one and a quarter inch bolt along with a two inch nut. And that means this can accurately measure bolt tension up to 110,000 PSI. Now what you'll do with bolt tension is take whatever number it gives you and because of the combination I'm using, you'll divide that by 70 and what's left over is going to be a very accurate representation of what the torque rating is. The five different tests that I'll be doing will involve just using a standard impact socket along with the impact wrench. So that's going to give us our highest rating with really no torque loss. The second test I'll be using a 6 inch impact extension along with the socket and that extra movement is going to cause some torque loss. The third test is going to be using a swivel impact universal joint along with the socket. Our fourth test, I'm actually going to change drive sizes. So I have a half inch drive to three quarter inch drive impact adapter along with a three quarter inch drive two inch impact socket. We'll plug that on the end of the W7150 and see what happens when you change drive sizes. And then finally our last test, I'm going to take the six inch extension along with the universal joint and the half inch drive impact socket and see how much torque loss we have there. Now to be extremely fair through the testing I do have a bunch of fully charged high capacity battery packs here. Every one of them has four bars of power and none have been used since I took them off the charger. So at the beginning of each test I'm going to swap out whatever batteries on the W7150 with a fresh one so we don't have any question at all as the power levels because the battery power may have dropped. The first step before I do any testing is to go ahead and heat the nut and bolt up by running it in and out a few times until we're getting consistent readings on the gauge. 
Now to do this and not overwork the W7150, I'm going to use the brand new DeWalt half inch high torque impact wrench to cycle this in and out. Now once I notice consistent readings, I'm going to start our first test. So our first test with just the impact socket, it's coming in at 54,000 PSI. With the extension it came in at 48,000 PSI. With the swivel universal joint we're coming in at 40,500. The half inch to three quarter inch adapter along with the three quarter inch impact socket is coming in at 46,500. joint and 6 inch extension, it's coming in at 39,000. And just to check our baseline again, I'm going to change the battery pack out again. We're going to try it with just the socket and see if we still come up with the 54,000 rating. Okay, our second test with the 2 inch impact socket, I actually held on it for just a little bit longer apparently and we came in at 57,000. Now that I've converted all those PSI ratings over to torque by dividing them by 70, I've written them all on here as well as put percentages of power. Now as far as the socket only goes, which would be our maximum amount of power, there were two different readings at the beginning of our testing as well as the end. Now the lower of those two was actually at the beginning and that's before everything really heated up extremely hot and it had more friction to overcome. So that came in at 54,000 PSI or 771 foot-pounds of torque, I'm going to call that 100% power, even though the second test did come in at above that. Now our second test with the socket came in at 57,000 PSI, or 814 foot-pounds of torque, which I'll call 106% power. Now really with our second test, when we used the 6-inch extension, that dropped it to 48,000 PSI which converted over to 686 foot-pounds of torque, or really only 89% of the original power. When we used the universal joint along with the socket, it dropped to 40,500, which is 578 foot-pounds, 
or really only 75% power. So just by using the universal joint, we lost 25% of the power output of the W7150. When we converted the drive size from a half inch up to three quarters, along with that three quarter inch impact socket, it came in at 46,500, which is 664 foot pounds, or only 86% of the original torque. And finally, the worst performance is when we did the six inch extension along with the universal joint. It came in at 39,000 PSI, which is 500, 57 foot-pounds, or only 72% of our original torque. So, now you've seen firsthand how torque loss works, and to get the maximum power out of any impact, you want to use it only with an impact socket. But if you double that up with universal joints, extensions, or adapters, it causes those power levels to drop way off, and you're not going to get the performance that you paid for. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.